Healthcare. 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 All right, thank you. So um, yesterday we, we did a lot, and it's a lot of information that's coming at you, but we're here to help you. So just remember that. And we'll try to get all these numbers and people's names <laughs> and what they do in one sheet for you. Laminated, laminated. My girl back there said, get it laminated so you have it. But um, we were talking yesterday about the centers. So we do have a list today. I'm gonna have Jen to come up and explain, to show you the centers that you will be responsible for. And then we'll do a Q&A, okay? Okay, so. And she's been copying this all morning. Sorry. <laughs> Linda did not like my fashion choice of putting my t-shirt on over my dress, but I did want to show solidarity, so I got it on here for a second. Um, I think at least one person from each organization was on a phone call about two weeks ago where we went through the child care centers and child care homes that we have not yet been successful reaching. And there, this is a whole bunch. Yeah, yes. Um, and um, India, can you go out there and tell Danika to pop back in here for a second? Okay, so our team, and Antonio talked about this yesterday. I mean, we have been reaching out really starting last fall. Emailing, calling, drop-by visits, emails, more phone calls, whatever we could do to reach groups. Um, and we've had a lot of success. Um, I think by, by different ways you cut the data, um, we've enrolled 1,000 child care workers in the District of Columbia in health care for child care. So what we're giving you is, there's a cover sheet here that sort of explains. We're going to email this to you. This is best viewed as an email document, not as a hard copy, but I, just because people have been asking about it, I want you to see the hard copy. So the first page is the center-based facilities that are not yet enrolled in health care for child care. Now, why haven't they enrolled? Sometimes they just have not responded to us. Just, we just don't really hear from them at all. Other times, maybe they said, oh, um, yeah, I'm kind of interested. I'll, I'll set up an appointment, and then they don't show up, and then we'll call them, and then we can't reach them, and then we call them, and we can't reach them, we call them, we can't reach them. So it is a spectrum. It's a wide spectrum from like basically have never really engaged with us at all despite numerous efforts to people who have said, yeah, yeah, I want to work with you, but they never quite get it together. And that's going to be this first page, and it's center-based. The second, um, let's see, is that one page long? The second page... It looks a little bit different. You can see that there's a column there that says home or extended home. That tells you these are the home providers. And um, the provider name and the contact name may be similar. They may be a little different. The provider name is their legal name that they have entered into the database for OSSI. So um, these are folks, again, who may not have responded to numerous attempts to outreach or who have said, maybe, I might be interested, but we can't quite get them to take the next step. Okay, and then there's a third group, or sometimes people say, I have coverage, but then they don't say what it is, and they, we just don't, we can't get enough information from them to actually make sure that they are covered and satisfied with their coverage, because remember, it's I, I want to enroll them in health care for child care, but if they have a source of insurance that they are happy with, that's, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. <coughs> the, third page is, the third and fourth pages are a little bit different. Um, some, many, many, many child care facilities in the District of Columbia are not eligible for our shop because they are a big company, a big, big company. If they have more than 100 employees, Probably by federal law, they're required to offer health insurance, so their employees have an offer of health insurance. Now, some of those employees, they feel like the insurance is too expensive for them. 
If they're a district resident, they can enroll in our individual and family marketplace. And we have enrolled some people who work at these centers in our individual and family marketplace on one of those, remember those three plans I told you yesterday, Kaiser Permanente, a Blue Cross Blue Shield PPO, and a Blue Cross Blue Shield HMO. It's a standard silver plan. The premiums are zero dollars. We'll enroll the district resident employee and their spouse or children and sh children. So these, this page three and page four, these are people who, they're not eligible for our shop. So you're not trying to get them to sign up for employer sponsored insurance. They already offer it. Um, but you may be wanting to try to connect with either the employees to see if they want to keep it or even, even connecting with their HR decision makers about can we see kind of what your plan is because we want to look at what DC HealthLink is offering and see if this is a better deal. Okay, I'll stop there. Um, Dan uh, the reason I made Danica come back in is because Danica is going to um, email this to you in, a, in a, an Excel spreadsheet. And, um, you know, you'll see that there's some, I think we have some places where we, we, we have a blank in terms of who wants to own that contact. We haven't quite decided yet. We didn't need to decide that moment. But this is going to be a living document, right? Because you guys are going to start making calls, and people will either change your mind or they won't, or they'll say, absolutely not, and here's why. We've got a different source of coverage. It's much better. Our team has essentially been dealing with spreadsheets like this for nine months because there's a bunch of them doing outreach. And so we're always in communication about the status of any one group. When we start having meetings with, when you all start having weekly meetings with our team, you'll be wanting to talk about your project's progress. You're gonna have questions like, oh my gosh, I got asked this question, I have no idea what the answer is, and we'll be helping you with that. But I also think that you'll be reporting out here on, on progress that you've made, or that we will be reporting out to you, because for all you know, they may contact us and make an appointment and we may set them up and here you have them on your target list and we're like, oh, guess what? They've already had two appointments with us and we think we're ready to register or enroll their people. So that's gonna be a, a, a place where we are trading information about this, you know, hit list, contact list. <laughs> um, any questions? Uh, if you work here, uh, contact your employer. If uh, you're, not, if you want an alternate uh, benefit or you want to learn more about the healthcare, then you can come back as an individual if you live in DC. Yeah, I'm not sure what okay? I, your question is about what part of it is public. I just want to make sure. Can we create a list of that tab? I, I don't have in front of me. Whatever that tab where it had all the big, the federally required um, centers that that need the re centers that required health insurance benefits for their employees. Well, I that would list? feel a little weird and awkward having something from us saying the, the federal government requires these people to have health insurance. I think that that just doesn't sit right. I'm, I'm just telling you, in this room, if they have more than 100 employees, our reading of federal law is they almost certainly are offering health insurance. You don't create a piece of paper that says these people do or do not. Like I don't want to, I don't want to be the source of authority about what they do and do not do. But I'm telling you that if you encounter someone at Bright Horizons, they have an offer of insurance from Bright Horizons. I almost certainly do. They might have turned it down because they said it wasn't affordable, but they have something that their employer offered them. This is not PII because he asked, he asked, so we just finished doing this training about PII, right? Names, phone numbers, email addresses. This would be PII. This normally would be PII, absolutely 100%, except that I pulled this off the Aussie website because they are required 
to submit it to OSI. So this is P, that, you know, it is PII in a way, but it, because it's public, you're authorized to have it. Now once you start, let's, let's, let's get off the large employer page, because that's going to be uh, not the common scenario. This, big, this first page is going to be your more, most common scenario, a center-based, center-based. So child's first steps, spaces in action, is going to try to reach out to them. Once you start talking to their employees, if you have an employee that you talk to, and you, or they give you a different phone number or a different email address, that's PII, and I want you to protect it. Doesn't mean you can't have it. You have to have it because you're going to keep talking to them. But that's what you need to be protective of. This particular piece of information has been made public by um, Aussie. When they got their license, they had to submit it. I, I, the reason I brought that up is we just said how you need to protect information and you're going to be sending things password protected. And I, then we're going to send you an email that's not password protected. I didn't want you to think. Well, that's weird. Um, so that's why I pointed out that this, this document, and this document alone is not PII, because it's otherwise published. Questions, questions, questions. Um, on our team, Ms. Kelly Scott over there has been like the person most tasked with trying to collate all the information we send her about a group's status. Like, are they interested, are they not? If they're not, why not? What did they say? Were they grumpy? Were they interested? Were they confused? Were they tired? Were they, like, desperate yesterday? S sassy. <laughs> Busy. Distracted. All of those things. OK. We're good. Today, group two did not do their scenario. Are you all ready now? Oh. Why is group two trying to get it together? Are you, in are you in charge of your group? Okay. <laughs> okay, this test time, y'all, test time. Um, what is meant by language access? Now, the African queen is sitting here. Y'all back like y'all know. Because she, she got... What, what, what do we mean when we talk about language access? What is that? In that person's native language. Right. Good. Y'all got that? All right. What's the difference between translations and interpretations? Tasia. I'm waiting for the mic. <laughs> I know the routine now. <laughs> <laughs> um, translation is, um, excuse me, interpretation is when you are interpreting something that is being spoken verbally, and translation is with something written on paper. Okay, good question, good. Okay, can you use a child at the age of 12 for interpretation? Why? Ba 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 ba. Okay. A couple reasons, because they are not an adult. Um, they don't have the training to interpret that language over about healthcare for childcare, and they are not a licensed interpreter. Good. When there are three persons involved and they're speaking the same language, do they have to be interpreted? Okay. Uh, when is the work plan due for the grant administrators? From the grant administrators. Okay, you got that one. Give me one example of an event that requires you to notify or contact the grant administrator. Give it a, there's a microphone. An occurrence of an unusual incident, like being hit by a bus, a car, or okay. death. <laughs> great, great, great. Okay, that was good. <laughs> Does anybody have another example? A different example other than an incident? Okay. What is a PII? Uh-uh, y'all. Come on now. 
She just left here. What's a PII? Privacy. Personal Person, right. Personally identifying information. PII. Remember that. Can you go to jail for, for PII? Okay. Just make sure you know that part. Don't want to see anybody in the orange jumpsuit. Okay. Um, okay. What's an example of violation of a PII? What is a violation of a PII? What's one example of a violation of a PII? Uh, one violation of PII could be um, that you lost your bag or that it was stolen and you didn't report it, if it had any HC for CC information in it. Okay, good. Oh, uh, yeah, you must report it within an hour. If it's within an hour, that's good. Thank you. Okay, what is PASS? P A S S. What is PASS? What is PASS? P A S S. Ooh. Well, well, this don't give me an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Why is pass important to know about? Maybe I'll start there. Thank you. She's giving the microphone. Why is pass important to know about pass? So we can get paid. All right. Just so you. And so, uh, when you have a problem with pass, who do you call? <laughs> <laughs> you probably won't. You probably won't get paid. <laughs> you call Linda. You probably will not get paid. <laughs> Nicole, right? Nicole Matthews. Who do you call if you have a concern with PII? Nikki. Nikki that's right. That's why I'm just, just so you know the stuff. I mean, you know. No. no. <laughs> who do you have a who do, who do you call if you have a problem while you out in the army, out on the field, and you got some questions? Who do you call? Who? Y'all act like y'all don't know. Y'all better know this. That's right. Act like y'all know. Don't call Linda. Don't call Jen. Don't call Antonio. Call Danica. If you have, if you need to contact somebody on the spur of the moment because you talk to a Spanish speaking person and you really don't understand, who do you call? <laughs> who in this room would you call? Who in this room? Antonio, that's right, y'all get his, get his name. Don't put no Linda, get his name. <laughs> I can hardly talk ghetto East, y'all talk about some Spanish. You, might, you really get confused, you really get confused. Okay, lastly, lastly, let me ask you this. What is, who is DC HealthLink, what is DC HealthLink? Now that, that everybody should be on that one. What is DC Health Link? The marketplace for us. For what? The marketplace for what? Thank you. And how many marketplaces are in DC Health Link? Two. And they are? Kaiser. Aetna. Uh, listen, listen to the question. Okay. What are the two marketplaces that DC Health Link? Oh, individual and shop. There you go. And how many I'm carriers? Sorry. And how many carriers? Four. Care, care First and United. All right. I don't know what y'all said. Who I said Kaiser, United, Aetna, Care First. Great, great. Okay, good. Okay. So, so that's good. Now I'm going to, um, lunch is, is uh, I think it's over there, right? I know y'all like them roast beef sandwiches yesterday and all of that stuff. So like, <laughs> everybody kept talking about those sandwiches. Yes. Oh, did everybody get the hair shot done? Anybody come late and did get a hair shot? Everybody got hair shot. Okay. So prior to lunch, we're going to take a group photo of the army, of the health care for child care. And so we can already set that up now. It's going to be up here between these two things. Okay. All right.